Today I'm going to talk about API and introduce you on how they are documented with Open API specification. So what is an API? An API is an interface of an application that provides services to other third-party application. An API has a list of endpoints which you can call. There has to be standards on how they are documented so that people have an agreement on how things are structured. This specification is called Open API specification. For this assignment, my groupmates Chris, Prakar, and I decided to make a simple Winnipeg Jets API. On the left side, you can see the code, and on the right side, you can see the output. I have six root objects, which is just the version, which is just the general information of your API, and then the server. And the tags is the resources or the data that you are trying to access. Next is path. I have two endpoints. The first one, you specify by year and it will give you the team roster. The first one is a get method. It is under the tag player and has a summary and a description and it also has a parameter. For this parameter, which is the year, is a path parameter and it must be required. Now the schema is the description and how the tag, what the data type should be. A year is an integer and a 32-bit integer and here is an example. Next on the list is the response object. For the first one is the success response, which is 200 and has a description and content. And under content, you would specify the type of file that you're going to get. So for this one, you're going to get a JSON file. This one is an array type and it will contain items that is roster. Now I will explain what this means later on and under components. Essentially, you are going to get a roster, which is an array of players. Next is 404, it's basically the same thing, except it's an error code and it's referring to error schema instead of the roster schema. The next endpoint is these player stats. It's the same one, it's also a get method and it takes three parameters. It also takes responses, the success response, which refers to stats schema and the 404 response. Last but not least is the components object. This is where you would store reusable definition throughout the documentation. For example, I have an error object that is used twice, one for each endpoint. Instead of defining it twice in two separate places, I could use refs object like this one to refer to the error object defined here. So now you've seen my example. I am going to introduce you to the three resources that I've used. The first resource that I use is Tom Johnson's step-by-step -step open API tutorial. It's a beginner's guide into understanding the general idea, and it assumes that you've never even heard of open API term before. And the next one is the official open API specification. This one is a bit more formal. Uh, if it's not mentioned in Tom Johnson's tutorial, I would go here to figure out how to structure things. It's a pretty well-designed structure that makes it easy to use and it's really easy to find things, even for a beginner like me. The next one is the Swagger Pet Store API specs. I have this open on the side to refer to. It really helps me to see things in action and really help me understand what's going on. Learning open API specification is a huge learning curve. A tip I have is to have these three resources open as you go through your YAML file, especially the tutorial by Tom Jones. Yes, it's long. Not gonna lie, I rushed through in the beginning, but later on everything is becoming really confusing. I went back to the tutorials and carefully reread the steps and I was able to understand the concepts and in the end, it's worth the read. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.